terms of expertise, digital, society and organization, and HEC Entrepreneurship Center. And let's directly move to uh, Jean-Michel's background. Jean-Michel is a graduate of uh, HEC uh, Executive MBA, and uh, he created uh, a very interesting uh, company after a finance background that you will explain. So the rule of the game is you will present us uh, this, uh, this entrepreneurial adventure, the, the, the learnings, the key learnings uh, you derived uh, of them, and then afterwards uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a, a session of questions and answer. So let's say about uh, half an hour, uh, because this conference is also recorded and will be reused for <laughs> some courses, and it's also uh, broadcasted on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live. So thanks a lot for the tech team. So uh, what's your background? Uh, why did you uh, intend to create MOBA? What's MOBA? And uh, what, what's the, the story of, uh, of this startup? OK, so good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you, uh, Carole, Etienne, for uh, welcoming me. Um, so my background is, as you said, a finance background. So I worked for 15 years in a different uh, finance position. Uh, as a statutory auditor first in a French company, then I switched to uh, Group Danone in the Biscuit uh, branch of uh, Group Danone. Then the Biscuit, so I worked on controlling part, so con internal control first, then controlling on purchasing industrial uh, purposes. Uh, and then uh, the Biscuit branch has been sent, uh, sold, sold, sorry, to uh, Kraft Foods, who th that became uh, then uh, Mondelez International, as you may know. Uh, so I took uh, many positions there, marketing controlling position in, uh, for full uh, perimeter of uh, France uh, in biscuits first and then for coffee. And in 2014, uh, I decided that uh, I uh, had to uh, work on uh, another topic uh, which, uh, which uh, interested me a lot. Uh, it was basically, uh, you know, sustainable development. Welcome, sustainable development, and uh, especially economy. So I looked for many topics. I worked on, on I tried to find many ideas on this, uh, on this area. And uh, finally, during the executive MBA, I had the opportunity to uh, and uh, especially Carol B. Touze, which to uh, study during the program and take advantage of all the classes study this project of Mober, uh, which is offer of uh, electric scooters uh, and launch it in Paris. So this is my background uh, and uh, I can propose you to start. So why did I create this? Because I think you all experienced this in the metro, uh, for example. Uh, I spent a lot of time going to work in traffic jam hour one way and one hour uh, the way back. So I decided that it was uh, time for me to find something interesting, at, uh, something that was uh, fun. Uh, overloaded, there's a lot of traffic jam. Uh, the subway is something, okay, it's certainly fast, but it's uh, also <laughs> full of people. Uh, so, and uh, these days you, you can experiment this uh, also. In average, we spend one hour and a half in traffic jam in, uh, in Paris, and the total cost of traffic jam in France is 1.8 billion uh, euros uh, a year. So that's uh, basically the, the starting point of the project. On top of that, there, there were existing offers like Velib and Autolib that you might know. So cumulated Velib and Autolib, it's f more than 45 million rentals per year, I mean, which is a huge number. So I said, okay, there, there's a market and there's an offer for this kind of shared services, right? Um, uh, on top of this, during a week, you have more than 16 million trips within Paris area. So re really the, 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 the inner city of Paris is more than 16 million trips. And if I look at the two wheelers especially, there's more than 83 million uh, thousand daily trips in two wheelers, of which 65 are for scooters. So I decided to create something who uh, could correspond to the majority of people, meaning uh, you, uh, even if you don't have any driving license, you can drive a scooter and it's nice because it's fast and it's fun also. 
uh, and uh, and you uh, you take off all this uh, this pain uh, uh, painful thing of of traffic jam in, in Paris. So to present you the service, I have a little video. So if the team can launch the video, that would be great. <coughs> Not sure it works. Yeah, yeah but the, the the sound won't be won't be good enough. I think they have to launch it. Is it okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah. Je crois qu'ils n'ont pas de prise de prise micro. Je la lance Ça, Le son va être... Il n'y a pas de son. Quoi. A simple offer, so an all-included services, only one tariff, no registration fee, no monthly fee, nothing. So as you saw it, uh, only one price, 19 cents per minute. Um, and to attract a lot of people also with nice scooters, so you, know, you see the vintage scooters and so on. In fact, what we did is a, a simple market study, you know, just putting two types of scooters in the street and say, okay, which which one is the your favorite one and each time it was this uh, vintage scooter so um as i said no registration fee simple pricing um entrance included two helmets provided in a top case and everything working with an app so you just had to click on the app to turn on the scooter and open the top case and to terminate your rental same thing just click on the app turn off the scooter and close the top case. So that was really, really simple um, and really appreciated by, by user, by the, by, by the way. So our competitive advantage at, at that time, uh, we had a top of the range uh, autonomy uh, on, the, on the scooter, more than 120 kilometers. And in reality, we, we reached 140 kilometers autonomy on the electric scooter, which is a huge autonomy. I mean, this is something in, in which we invested and uh, that uh, worked pretty well. We uh, put also a tempor temporary stop uh, option at 9 cents uh, per minute instead of the 19 cents per minute. So uh, th this was also a, a new feature that we developed. Open 24-7 and uh, two people could go on the, on the scooter. So the insurance uh, enabled us and enabled you to uh, to go two people on, on the scooter. So this is our figure. We had only 20 scooters. So 
we started with only five, and at the end we had uh, only 20 scooters. Uh, and uh, at this stage, when we launched the service in, gen uh, in January 2016, uh, only five scooters, and we were the only one in the streets. So even the competitors, City Scoot, for example, was not there. They had some scooters, but in stations, in parking, so not visible in the street. Uh, and we were the only one developing this stationless uh, service. Um, and at the end, when we terminated the service, you see our registration uh, <laughs> of uh, new users. And this month here, the highest one, was when a third competitor arrived in the, in the, in the city. So Coop, which is another competitor today, uh, which arrived in, uh, in August last year, arrived and our, our registration uh, go, goes up uh, really uh, fastly. But as you see here also, uh, this is the usage. Uh, no, this is the number of users and, uh, and, and then the usage. With only 20 scooters, it was not possible to, you know, to increase the number of, uh, of users and, and usage. Because each time you open the app, of course, you see that there's only 20 scooters. Maybe half of them are already used. And then what do you do? I mean, after a moment, it's just frustrating you know, <laughs> just to be there and not to see any scooter in, in the uh, entire uh, Paris city. So our strategy for uh, the, the next 18 months was, OK, we are going to go for funds, develop a fleet of 700 scooters, push communication, uh, so in the same spirit that you, you saw in the video and, and so on, and then internalize the information system. Because to go fast on the market, what we decided is we are going to externalize anything, uh, everything. There's there are solutions existing in the market that are working very well. All the app, for example, was not ours. It was really simple, really user convenient. So we said, OK, this is nice, and we, can, we will be able to, uh, to have a proof of concept very quickly. And then, once we have this, because we had a lot of calls from uh, third parties, people calling from uh, other cities in France or abroad, we said, OK, we are going to build a franchise. And the, in this franchise, what we are going to put is our own system, uh, information system. We are also going to offer which, uh, something that is a, a real barrier when you want to enter this market, is the leasing solution, and then a strong and attractive brand. So this, this was the, the, the strategy uh, at that time. And the idea was to deploy in many cities. As you see, this was the, the contacts, uh, this were the contacts we had in, uh, in all the cities, so in France and abroad, uh, for a development plan this year, I mean, in 2018. Um, so business plans, some uh, hypotheses to, uh, to show you what we showed to funds uh, when we were to, uh, uh, to go for funds. This is the rise of the turnover and the, uh, and the EBIT. Basically, we managed the pricing a bit differently from what you saw before, with an average price that enabled us to get an, let's say, higher average price compared to the 19 cents we, uh, we just saw. Um, I will explain why if you, if you want later. And we increase the business plan with more usage for more users and more scooters, of course, uh, going from 700 scooters to 2,000 scooters for Paris only, okay? This is Paris only figures. And what we put in the, uh, in the financing here was, OK, we are going to look for 1.7 million euros. This was excluding all the financing of the fleet. So without talking about the scooters, and I will explain why li later. And out of those uh, 1.7 million, you see here the, uh, the split, 700, uh, 700K on people and organization, and then again, so information system and marketing to fit with our strategy, remember, our 18-month strategy, right? So, key learnings. Let's go, <laughs> Let's go to what counts now. Um, well, in fact, if there's one key learning uh, in, the, in this project is clearly whenever you can try something and it does not a huge cost, try it. So, and marketing is the perfect example. It's really easy online because most of the time it does not cost anything. Uh, it's also easy offline. Uh, for example, we tested you know, to uh, give flyers in the subway, zero impact. Uh, we tested to put some um, couponing offers in restaurants, zero impact. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, at some point, there are some things that are, that are really uh, amazing is uh, someone is going to speak about, because of the competition coming in, uh, in, uh, in the city and because also uh, the city of Paris is communicating around electric scooters in, uh, in, uh, as a long-term project, then some newspapers are interested in, you know, in these offers and when they look at the competitive landscape, they see, okay, there's city scoot and there's an, uh, also a small player there, Mober, so Mober is looking for money, so maybe they, they, will, be, uh, they will have a role uh, in, uh, in some uh, months from, uh, from there. So, and this, I, I was thinking that, you know, marketing on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, playing on Instagram, we, would brought us a lot and a lot of users. But all these newspapers and TV, even in Telematin, you know, I don't know if you know this TV show in Telematin, I thought nobody was looking this, but it's totally wrong. The day we, we, we got some, some minutes in Telematin, the number of registration was rising really fast. I mean, that was amazing. So it was, for me, it was really some, something new. I, mean, I, I would not have put one penny on this, uh, on this investment, you know. So marketing online works well. Uh, marketing offline, couponing, flyers for us did not work at all. Um, user experience, this is clearly the, the, the thing that you can also experiment. Uh, it's uh, uh, on the app again, when we build the temporary, uh, temporary uh, post button, that worked very well because, because we did not have a lot of scooters. People were really happy to be able to rent the scooter at a lower price and some, some kind of privatization of the scooter, you know. I can stop, I can keep it for even an hour, one hour, and that's okay, I can go forward and, and uh, go with my, uh, my own scooter. So user experience, we also put, for example, um, you know, a phone holder on the scooter. So we tested various solutions. We put the phone holder with a plug in the, so that you, can, uh, you cannot lose all your battery when, you're guided, when you are guided by your, your phone. And that was amazing. People loved it. I mean, on the social networks, we had a lot of, okay, that, that's great. Thank you very much. You're the only one doing this and so on. So on this also, you can try and test. Uh, a phone holder is five euros. So you can put it really easily on a, on a scooter and say, okay, I put it only on one and I would see what, what are the comments, right? Product development and, and producers. It's a bit more complex in this case, but we, we did it in the sense that we had, uh, we had first one uh, provider. It was a German provider for the scooters. And then our communication company, the one who built the film, who built the logo, the, the design of this presentation and so on, uh, um, present us a new company. It was a new startup. The guy was, uh, had spent many times in China and he said, okay, you know, you know what? This kind of scooter in China, there's a lot. I mean, it's really public model. You can buy it uh, almost everywhere. So I can import this for you and maybe improve something in it. And what we improved is clearly what made us top of the range in autonomy is the battery and the controller. Basically, the scooter is a pack of battery and the controller, which is the brain of the scooter. And we designed this, so we invested quite a lot of money on, the, on that to make the scooter top of the range. Because what I did not explain is that if you work stationless, you have to recharge the scooter at some point, right? So what we did is we had swappable batteries inside the scooter. So we were able to take the battery off when they were low charge and replace them with new batteries that were fully charged. So the more the range you have in the scooter, and the less you go on the scooters to, uh, to, uh, to put energy in it. Um, so we decided to, in, to invest in this, and we had, in the end, two providers, two different providers, but the opportunity to switch from one to another in case of. So this is the kind of thing that we did online, for example. So, you know, send a selfie, and we'll send some, uh, some uh, free minutes for you. Uh, send a nice photo from a nice place in Paris, and so on. So, this was really funny. I mean, this was the, the funny part of the project where you, you can communicate widely on, on the spirit and the brand identity and, and, and it works uh, very, very well. Second learning, timing is everything. And on this, I have to, I have to go maybe on more chronological uh, order there. So after two weeks, we put the five scooters in the street. We got 
three phones calling. OK, so I said, what do we do? So I called a friend of mine. He was, he was specialized in fundraising and so on. He said, OK, now we have to build a, a deck and go for funds because we need money at the early stage. We need money already. So we go for funds. And the kind of question we had were, were at this time, we, so it was beginning of 2015 again. The, the, the type of question we had was, were, is there a market? OK. Uh, OK, we're the first one. So yeah, 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 there's a market. Um, <laughs> um, how did you build your, all your assumption in your business plan? OK, so there's no offer existing in the market. So yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we took some assumptions. That, that's, that's for sure. Um, how do you know that the, the consumption and the usage is going to increase that way? Uh, OK. <laughs> So it, it was quite quite complicated, you know, to to answer all those questions. Uh, and in June, uh, the same year, we got one fund, maybe a, a bit smarter than the others. And the guy told us, "Okay, you know what? I'm ready to finance uh, the IS. I'm ready to finance to put money on marketing. I'm ready to put uh, money on the stretcher and hire the best people and so on. But I'm not ready to put one euro on the scooters." I don't want to finance the scooters. It's highly depreciable uh, good, so it's not an asset. Maybe in two or three years, value will be zero. So I don't want to put money on this. Find a solution. So OK, so we lost four months you know, in financing, uh, financing. And we say, OK, we, we have to go for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the, an alternative solution for financing the, the scooters. So it was too early to go to the fund at this time. No data, uh, no information about the market, no information about the usage. Are you going to have a, a high level of maintenance and so on? Who knows? I mean, it's just assumptions, right? Um, then we go and find a leaser. So we, stayed ba we saw banks, we saw all the leasers on the place, and everybody was really careful on, OK, it's a new market. I don't know scooters. Uh, on top, it's electric scooters. So what about the value of the battery at the end and things like this? So very, very complicated. Um, we found one, but it was not a top one, top, top one tier, you know, uh, leaser. It was a second tier leaser, but it was the only one. So, OK, so we tried to deal. And the guy was changing his insurance company. So at the same time, we were discussing with, uh, with them. They said, OK, but uh, we have to change our insurance because in our package, we rent the scooter, but also we provide the insurance included. So the insurance is a bit specific in your case because you have two, two people on the scooters. They are renting the scooters and not, uh, not uh, owning it. So let's see. Um, we started the search of the leaser the same date we had the remark for the fund, so June uh, 2015. We signed a contract with the leaser in January 2016. So it was eight months. Conclusion, this is too long. You know, because <laughs> it's, it's almost a year that you lose just trying to find funds. And, and OK, you, you are getting more data you know, on your service and so on. So you say, OK, now I'm. I'm pretty shaped to go for, for the funds. I have more data, and I have a leaser. And we signed a contract for 5 million euros and 1,000 scooters. So it's not nothing. OK, so let's go for funds. And we go for funds again. And uh, two months later, so one month uh, later, uh, we, we had one fund. We said, OK, we are agree, and we are, going, we, are going to, we are ready to finance between 500 and a million euros on, on your project. The only problem is that. We are not an entrepreneurial fund. We are just uh, trying to, you know, diminish the fiscal base of my clients, basically. So find another fund on which we will, uh, with which we are going to collaborate, and then we can uh, we can put some money. In reality, we never found this second fund. We talked to industrial, like the RTP. We talked to many many funds. The problem was that at the same time. City Scoot, our main competitor, had already a thousand scooters in the street. So the question was, is there a market for two? <laughs> it's not, is there a market? Is there a market for two? So this was the, this was the point at this stage. And uh, to make it short, at the, at the same time, uh, our leaser 
said, okay, you know what? I have your full BP. Your project is super interesting. I'm going to launch my own offer. It will be <laughs> with you or without you. If it's with you, okay, you work with me. If it's without, without you, we do not provide any scooters anymore. Okay, good. So what we did is we tried to write a partnership with them. So we negotiated during three months. So for the, the full summer last year, we negotiated, you know, uh, the shareholder protocol, uh, the investment agreement and so on. And this is how a three years project fall in uh, three days because three days before the signature of the, of the project, he told, okay, you know what? There are three, th three shareholders in the company. One is too old, he does not want to, to go on. So th the, the other ones do not want to, to continue on the, on the project. So we're done. What are you going to do? I have no chance to continue. I mean, my financial situation is in, uh, you know, orange, red. Uh, <laughs> so no, I have to stop. And then we decided to stop. And when we stopped, a month later, we got new proposal for funds. And then it was too late. Because the company was already in the liquidation process and so on. So this is basically, I mean, this is a big learning that, that uh, I want to share with you. Yeah, it's a, no, I mean, this is a roller coaster, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, this is really, for me, this is really the critical part of, of the project. And the financing round is, is uh, something tricky. There, there's, I mean, there are a lot of situations that you, you, can, uh, you can imagine. Uh, whether it is the best or the bad choice, you don't know. But each time you take the decision, for you, it's the best choice. Because, of course, you're, it's always a question of trade-off, you know. And, uh, and yeah, this is the way it happens. So did we launch at the right time? Because, you know, is there a market? Is there a market for two? And so on. So this is when we started the project. This, is, this was the, uh, the, the number of offers existing in the world. So Amy was in Berlin, Motit was a try and test in Barcelona, and Scoot was not really in free floating mode, so they had some stations in San Francisco, so not exactly more than Velib or um, like uh, Velib or Autolib. A year later, so Mobile and City Scoot arrived on the, on the market, and we knew that there are new producers of scooters and the guys Okay, they have a lot of funds. Uh, they certainly want to enter this market later. So, okay, we have, we have a, a look on this. And last year, this was the situation. So all these offers are electric or thermic scooters in free floating, sharing and self-service. So this is the base that we have today. And I'm sure there are, there are some missing uh, operators here. So yes, I think it was the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, as uh, this great philosopher Sylvester Stallone said, you always need a plan B because the laser really <coughs> sealed our future. I mean, and I did not have time uh, and I did not take time to find a plan B. But in my situation, it was critical. I mean, without him, I, I, would, I would not be able to do anything because I knew that funds are not going to put a penny in the, in the scooter. So I have to, to find a solution for this. Um, never stop looking for associates. So this would be also my recommendation because uh, I made the story maybe a bit short, but in July last year, my partner, we were two building the company, said, okay, you know what? I'm exhausted. I do not have any financial resources anymore. So I quit. So. I mean, looking for associates and partners is also critical. And the more you have, and the more you create opportunities because of the network, because of financial resources and so on. So this would be also my recommendation. And don't, do not forget yourself. I mean, this is really critical for financial point of view, but also on the you know, health point of view. Uh, I run my first marathon last year, and this was my, you know, my something I was really proud of at the end of this project. <laughs> at least I did not lose any, <laughs> everything, you know? <laughs> I did something with myself. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the funny part, but yes, it's important to think about you, your financial situation. Are you able to handle the situation? What, I mean, what's next? What is going to happen next? And how many times are you going to live 
uh, with your resources, but also you also have to uh, to build your brain and your 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 spirit ready for the next step because you you just get out of this exhausted really, so yeah, uh, yeah. And there's many letters in the alphabet. So, oh, last movie if you don't mind. Sorry, it's in French. This is a movie that we intended to uh, to put on the uh, social networks also, uh, but we it's not finished. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, a funny part of it, I, I would like to, to share it with you. So I don't know if the team can launch this second. Ah, yeah, that's okay. Je sais pas ce qui m'est arrivé hier. Je te le donne dans la ville. Merci. Scarlett Johansson. Mais non. Scarlett Johansson. Je sais pas ce qui m'est arrivé hier. Non. Je te le donne dans le mille. Merci. Scarlett Johansson. Mais non. Scarlett Johansson. J'étais garé dans le sixième et tout d'un coup je sens comme une odeur de vanille ou de fraise, je sais plus. Elle se parfum à la fraise, Scarlett Chut, laisse-moi raconter. Elle s'approche. Et là, je sens comme une émotion. On fait connaissance. Et hop, elle me débloque. Elle a l'appli bah Bien sûr, c'est les Américains, ça, ils ont toutes les applis. Eh ben, dis donc. Et comment ça finit Enfin, je veux dire, vous avez... Oh, on a roulé dans tout Paris, elle avait plein de rendez-vous. Puis on a passé le reste de la nuit à discuter sur les berges de Seine jusqu'au petit matin. Oh Et vous avez parlé de quoi De tout, de nos vies. Elle m'a parlé d'elle. Enfin, je crois. Comment ça Bah, tu sais, moi, l'Américain... Eh ben, t'es une sacrée veine. Pourquoi tu tires cette tête, alors Je crois que je suis amoureux. Encore Mais là, c'est pas pareil. Scarlett, ma Scarlett, je t'aime. Oh là là, ça recommence au secours. Time done. Thank you. So Michel, congratulations for this presentation. Uh, Thank you. Living one. So, it, uh, it's just a failure. I mean, it's <laughs> but you know the statement, uh, the saying: sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, and yeah. you, you learned a lot, and you exactly. shared a lot with us, yeah. and we'll share this uh, experience. And it's difficult to find people like you. Uh, who, uh, who take a break and say, okay, uh, I've done this. So I have lots of questions, but first uh, I will leave the, the, the floor to, uh, uh, to our participants. Yeah. First of all, thank you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, don't be, don't be. I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> so um, your main problem was in getting capital so that you can sustain your growth. Yes. And um, a, a week ago, we were in Station F and we were having a discussion with the entrepreneurs there. And they told us that uh, they managed to get um, some money from this uh, government organization, some money from this bank. We got a loan, we got a grant, we got money just coming. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's easy, right? That's yeah. easy to get money. That's how, yeah. that's yeah. how, they, that's how they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it, right? that's, that's what everyone says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just answered the question. No, no, no. I, I mean, uh, it, it, when I presented the project at the end of my executive MBA, I mean, one of the, the member of the jury there told me, okay, you know, there's a lot of money on the place, so it should be okay. Yeah, I mean, certainly. And yes, we, we've been to the, uh, you know, uh, DPI. Uh, we've been laureate of uh, Scientipol Initiative, which is an accelera acceleration program called uh, Wilco today. So we get some money there. We get uh, 150k, you know. So that's that's already a lot of money. But in our case, that was not sufficient because of the scooters, and because each time you put the nice thing with our scooter is each time you put one euro in the scooter, you put some something in marketing because of the design of the scooter, you know, because it's, they are nice. And because when users drive, uh, ride the, the scooter in the street, many people stop them and say, OK, what is this? I mean, it's a nice scooter. Oh, and it's electric. That's super, super cool. But the only problem is that if you want to, to grow big, you really need the first funds we got. Uh, we, got uh, we were asking for 5 million. We were not going for 1.7. So of course, we could split this in small parts, you know, and say, OK, we're going to put 150 scooters and then 300 and blah, blah, blah. And we did. But in the end, I mean, it was maybe too risky. There was this uh, hardware side, uh, you know, it's a bit ugly and, uh, and maybe dirty to, to put something uh, 
Okay, so when everybody is talking about you know the new app, the new blah 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 service uh, with the Uber thing, so uh, uh, you just have to manage something that already exists, but you do not invest in hardware. So yes, supposedly there is a lot of money out there. Uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, maybe we are not convincing enough. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is the kind of, of question. Never, nobody told us, okay, you have a bad team. I mean, you guys on the two that are going to make it. Uh, the team was okay. So at some point you say, okay, what is, the, what is the deal? So when you have the question, is there a market? And maybe so sometimes you have the, the, the conclusion of a fund will tell you, you know what, okay, we, we are still investigating this sector. So we don't know if we are going to put money in it or not. Uh, but yeah, come later. But when you come later, competition is going ahead, and so, yeah. Just a quick follow-up here. In hindsight, would you have done something differently to get to collect some cash? I w uh, what I would, would do today is certainly an intermediate uh, step, so maybe 500K, okay, you know? Yeah. So you go for... Business angels. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. But even business angels, we tried the business angels, but uh, I think we tried uh, maybe with too much ambition. Okay. Uh, because if you if you talk about a thousand scooter or two thousand scooters, they say, "Wow, that's big money." Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Girls, before <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, you know. Thank you. Quick one. Did you have a, a formal risk assessment plan when you started? Did you have to show it along your business plan? What do you call a? I think the, the answer is no, is no, because I don't know what is a formal <laughs> risk assessment. <laughs> what do you call a formal assessment risk? Well, um, I took a uh, venture capital private equity class as part of the MBA, and we did uh, a formal risk assessment on the sectors, the failure sectors and success sectors for startups. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, even in the pitch deck that we presented to funds, there is nothing like this. Uh, it was more all about the strategy, the financials, but nothing like this, no. Yes? Did you investigate why your competitor succeeded to grow? And, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, so, I mean, there are many reasons there. Uh, one is that they did this intermediate step I was uh, mentioning before. So they, r they raised 800K and then 600 more. So this enabled them to go for uh, 150 scooters at the very beginning. And what they did really well managed is that uh, they went to the city of, of Paris and when they launched their services, uh, they got the Meyer present there. So the, you know, the press release impact was huge. And in everybody's mind, it was something dealt with the city and kind of exclusive, uh, exclusive offer like Autolib and Velib, which, is, which was not true. And we tried to deal with the, the city of Paris saying, okay, you know what? There's a bias there that you put in the competitive landscape. So please communicate that city scoot is not your uh, service and that you are not uh, putting more inf emphasis on this one uh, than uh, than the others. We get uh, we get a letter from the city, but nothing uh, you know nothing came in the in the press. So, yeah, on this they they were they were they've been really really good. Yes, no. Um, I had two questions. One is how did you manage your personal finances during this time? Truly, because I'm assuming you're not, <laughs> you're not paying yourself. And two, how did you manage the stress of going through uh, fundraising? Okay, uh, so personal situation. Uh, as many entrepreneurs in France, I guess uh, I took advantage of the uh, of the Pôle Emploi, you know, <laughs> 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 subsidies that we that we have, uh, and then I put my personal uh, my personal uh, uh, you know earnings in uh, in the project a lot, to be honest, uh, certainly too much. Uh, when I'm looking back today, it's it's really it has been really critical. So yes, certainly too much. And this is why it's a specific point. I mean, when I say do not forget yourself, I'm really thinking about this. Um, and second question was sorry. Stress of fundraising. Yeah. Yes. In fact, what is really interesting in this kind of project is that there's a 
the agency, for example, who designed the logo and the, this presentation, the movies and so on, were really pushing us. And what they did, and they, they said, okay, you know what? We are sure it's going to work. So we are going to invest our uh, competencies in developing all this, and you will not pay anything. But when you raise money, we enter in the, in the you know, we became a shareholder. And, the, and we had at least three people like this, three, you know, people believing in the project. And each time you have a bad news, well, often there's a good news. So it's all a, you know, all a balance. And, and each time you have a good news, it's something you, you grab it and you, <laughs> you try to, to push it as much as possible. So, so yes, sometimes you're a bit des desperate because, okay, you have bad news, the funds say no and so on. <laughs> but then you have one fund that says, okay, I'm ready to invest. And they write a letter, you know, but you have to find a second fund. So, okay, you go. And then, and, you know, it's this kind of, of process. So, yeah, sorry, this and, and <coughs> Yes, we could have done this. Uh, the only th this is really for personal comfort, you know. You, I mean, we were both uh, living in Paris with our families, and to change from one city to another. I mean, this is the kind of thing you have to be there. So uh, the guys who were who were swapping the batteries in the morning at five was us. So yes, you can go anywhere. You can go in another city, but at some point, I mean. You have to manage also this uh, family life and, and your project. And to be able to do that, even staying in the same city, I mean, my wife is, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's wonderful, all the support I got from, from her, you know, and uh, this would not have been possible without her, to be honest. So, yes, we could do that. Uh, but we, we also knew that Paris, it's a new offer. Remember in 2015, there were only two offers in Europe. So, Paris is really a two-wheeler city. You know that scooters are really, really, uh, uh, really used in this city. Elsewhere, I don't know. I don't know. But in Paris, yes, I know because I live there. So. Yes. so I actually have two questions. The first one is regarding the business plan you had at the beginning. Did you have like a set um, t uh, with uh, like time sequence of raising money with a specific amount? Yes, that you of had course. In mind? Yeah. Like, did you hit any obstacles that made you change that? Because, uh, like, I, I don't know, but, but like, you said at the beginning you had 150K something? Yep. And then you went up to request 5 million? Yes. So with the, with the financing of the, of the scooters, yeah? Like, right? yeah. Uh, like, from my perspective, that, like, there's, there's a huge difference. No, yes, you, you're right. At the beginning, we were looking for funds to uh, raise the fee to 100-something scooters. Uh, but the fact is that the competition was growing really fast. So CityScoot put 150 scooters in June, the same year we launched. And at the end of the year, they raised uh, 15 million, including the financing of the fleet. So they already, already had 600 scooters. So we managed the business plan to be competitive versus City Scoot because we knew that the opportunity was there and that we could not afford to lose too much time in you know, going 100 and then 200 and 400 because six months yeah. later they had 1,500 scooters. Yeah, I mean, so we tried to adapt the, the business plan like this. Second question is, did you think of at a certain point uh, trying to pivot from electric uh, motorcycles into petrol motorcycles? No. Yeah. It what was the cost of an electric? Ele uh, the full cost of our scooter was around 5,000 euro. Yeah. And, and more than half of it were the batteries inside. Well, three batteries, so two batteries in the scooter plus an additional battery and the controller. Because all the technology, in fact, in the, in the scooter. Because a normal like fuel run would be half, half of it. Yeah. Yes. Like, is but no, that was not possible. Like 
No, yeah. Ecological? Yeah, exactly. Non, I would be sick. I would be sick. I, I could not do this. <laughs> wow. No, really, really. I could not. I mean, it's still... No, yeah. It's still less no, than... Less but than some people are doing this. I mean, there's yeah, a company... My, my point is that if you give the Parisians the chance to run on a petrol motorcycle, it's much less pollutant than a yeah, diesel I mean, car, yeah. because Paris is not like 90% diesel car, yeah. which does not make sense, because they all have SP. Yeah. So but I could not do this. Oh, so it's like your choice is not... Yes, financial. it's just a question of value. Uh, sorry, there was a question there before, and you after. Sorry. No. Who? Oh, sorry. Um, was there ever an exit strategy? Sorry. Was there ever an exit strategy, or was it just a long-term project? That was meant to uh, no, at this stage we had no exit strategy. No. I mean, this is a, this is also a question that funds ask you. Okay, what is the exit strategy? Uh, you know what, let's build the business first and then we, we can talk. I mean, let's talk how, many, how much money you want to put in and, uh, okay, I mean, I'm open to anything. I'm an entrepreneur, so, yeah, everything is open, but it's too early to say, okay, this is the strategy, long-term strategy, we're going to sell. Uh, yeah, we were dealing also with uh, groups like RATP, as I said. Uh, we approached SNCF also. We approached NG, uh, all these groups, because they have some kind of linked with uh, mobility. Uh, and by the way, today I'm, I'm working as a consultant for Indigo, which is the, you know, Vancy Park, the parking, and they want to develop this exactly the same offer. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any assistance in raising money? No, yeah, we had the fundraiser. So the first one was a friend of mine <coughs> who designed the deck and uh, he knew all the funds we had to, to, uh, to connect with. And the second one was, uh, it was uh, another company. They contacted us saying, okay, I love your project. I already worked on the mobility area, so uh, I would be interested in uh, accompanying you in, uh, in uh, raising funds. Uh, so they, they rebuilt the full BP, so they worked a lot. Uh, and also on this, you have two types of fundraiser. You have the fundraiser that are going to be paid only on the fee. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you raise a million and they get, let's say, four or five percent. And you have some fundraiser, and we, I mean, at some point we have, we have to do a choice b between those two. Some fundraiser who, rec who are claiming, um, you know, a retainer, so like 5,000K a month for all the process, plus the fee. So 5,000K a month, I mean, again, if you're an entrepreneur, you have 150K, you know, <laughs> 500, so you get, you're going to put 25,000K during the, all, the, all the process, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. What's the fundraiser's name? The fundraisers? Yeah. Uh, one was an, indi an individual, sorry, and uh, the other one is, um, I forgot it, right? Now I will give you the name. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just I, I called in this week. I, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just out of, out of, curios out of curiosity, um, how many insurance issues did you in the end of the day have? Uh, we had one serious accident. Y is this what you you are talking yeah. about? Okay, we had one serious accident. I mean, the the guy the the guy riding the scooter was not responsible. Wait, he was serious. I mean, it ended in the hospital. So yes. Uh, and uh, and we had two uh, two tries to steal a scooter, mm -hmm. but each time, as they were you know located with GPS, SIM card, and so on, we could uh, we could find the, the scooters. But basically, this is uh, this is uh, yeah. yeah. Um, just link to what you previously <coughs> mentioned. Did you have conversations with your manufacturer about uh, creating a potential partnership where you could go into Yes, the yes. And did that they, they were not interested at this time. Okay. No. And then the second question is... On, on, on this, because I'm, I'm still working on this area today, on this, uh, most of the scooter providers and producers uh, want to stay in their you know, area of expertise. So they, they are providers. They can build a scooter that <coughs> is sharing ready, but they don't want to be part of it. I mean, so they, they're not going to build a venture with you. They're not going at this stage. They, they don't want to do that. And, uh, and sorry, my second question is, would you do this again? 
when you quit your job? This kind of project? No, not this kind of project, just go into an entrepreneurial thing full time. I'm still thinking about many projects, yes. But, uh, I mean, at this stage, clearly, I do not have the financing situation <laughs> that enables me to go. So if you have some money and a good idea, and, uh, <laughs> no, yes, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I think thi this, is, this is also critical. Uh, I worked for, uh, for more than 15 years in big companies and so on. Uh, and uh, I measure to uh, the extent to which it's so comfortable to be in uh, such a big company, you know. Even if you feel discomfort, it's so comfortable. It's so easy. Uh, and at the same time, you say, OK, but it's so boring. So you know, it's, it's always, OK, you have to do something of your life. I mean, I'm 42, so yeah, I have to work. Uh, and um, I have to pick the money where it is today, <laughs> to be honest. But yes, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking about new projects. Uh, one of the... Uh, uh, when we talked with the BPI, we were mentioning the BPI uh, earlier, uh, one prior uh, director of investment in the BPI, who is now out of the BPI, called me last week saying, OK, I have two projects. Would you be interested? And so on. I said, yes, I'm interested. Just know my situation is that. So yeah. But yeah, it, I think it's complicated to get out. <laughs> uh, but once you get, you're out, it's complicated to go back. So. Well, as I said, in fact, uh, the, first, the first round of raising funds was not even calculated. I mean, we've, we put five scooters in the street and we had three calls. So, yeah. so we said, OK, what do we have to do? And then I asked my friend, he's a fundraiser, he said, OK, we have to build a deck and go because there's a market. Uh, there's no one on the market still. So yeah. So, so you launched everything by yourself from personal funds and after you got offers from the other sources? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, so how did you meet your co-founder and what were the, like, the first five broad Sorry, I, did, I didn't understand. Um, no, how did you meet your co-founder ah, okay. what were the first, I would say, five major topics that you talked about? Uh, uh, okay, f so my co-founder was a friend of my, he's a friend of mine, sorry, he was a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> he's still, he to be honest, <laughs> but also, I mean, the word is not, is not, uh, is not fully, uh, fully, uh, fully false. The best uh, is a friend is often to create a startup with him. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a good recommendation to create with a good friend. I mean, we, we met, we were three years old, so mm -hmm. I know him very well. I can tell him whatever I need to tell him. So that, that's the good part of it. But yeah, I mean, you take, you take a risk to lose your, uh, your friend, really. Uh, and sorry, what was the second question? What were the, when it came to the business, what were the first kind of five major topics that you discussed? You know, when you were conceptualizing? Uh, well, it, it's more, it was more about the concept and in which way we could complement each other. I mean. He had uh, his own company developing websites, so all these, you know, IS part with the apps and so on. He knows this very, very, very well. I'm very poor in uh, in technology, uh, so we we really saw uh, at the very beginning that we were complementary on this, and we could work together. The it was really basic. I mean, uh, it was more discussing about okay, I have an idea. What do you think? And, and this also, when you have an idea and each time you present it, because you have to speak about your ideas, the idea of, OK, but if I speak, someone is going to steal me the idea. No, I mean, you have to, my point of view is you have to speak about your ideas, to present the, your ideas as much as possible and get feedback. Because you, at the same time you get the feedback, you have new ideas and your, your, your topic is going to evolve uh, and, uh, and the way you're going to build your project is going to evolve. So. Uh, yes, it was really you know discussing like this, and uh, and uh, and we built it, uh, we built it uh, the the project, uh, taking decisions on okay, we are going to externalize the IS first, and then we internalize, and we already at the very beginning in the uh, identified the person who worked with us if we were able to to raise the money, so these kind of things. And just out of curiosity, did your co-founder have the same kind of passion for circular economy? No, not at all. So, but this is, this is the kind of things where at some point you say, okay, you know what? It will never be a thermic scooter. 
Why? Because I don't want to. So, so if it's thermic, you work alone. You know, it's like this is not possible. No. Did, did you source? Uh, where did you source uh, the um, the screwdrivers from? Uh, chi the first one came from China via a German company. I mean, it's a German company that has been bought by a Chinese company. Yep. I have a comment more than it is a question. And I just want to say I highly respect the courage that you had to use your savings for an entrepreneurship uh, experience. Yeah. And even more when you talked about uh, the electric cars and even if it made business sense for you, you wouldn't want to go into gasoline cars yep. or petrol yep. cars. You wanted to stay with electric yep. cars. And I just want to say I really respect what you just said. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes? Uh, a related question. Did you try to use this uh, green concept as a, as a differentiation strategy for competition with your customers? Because in Paris, a lot of people really care. And it could have been your clients as opposed to um, At some point, it was attractive for users. For, for all the people who do not know that there are electric scooters existing on the market. And uh, even if you want to buy a scooter yourself, there, the offer is bigger now, but at this, at this time it was not that huge. So yes, for, for attracting uh, new users, this was a very interesting. But if you want to present your project to groups like uh, RATP, SNCF, uh, NG, or if you go to the Bank to Big Investment, BPI, and so on, I mean, the ecological side is kind of normal thing. Uh, I don't think you, you could arrive with uh, something, you know, that is going to pollute, uh, pollute the air, put some more noise in a city where there's a, a lot of noise already. So this was, this was a bit obvious for, for this uh, ecological side, I would say, I would say. Why did you want to solve this particular problem in the first place? Where did the idea come from? Because I spent so much time in traffic jam <laughs> in my car. <laughs> very big, uh, very beginning. The, the, what I did is I, I, I just <coughs> saw my situation. I said, OK, I'm, I need more than an hour to go to, to work and more than one hour to get, come back to home. <coughs> so I go for the, uh, you know, the auto école. And I, I tried the, uh, I don't know, this uh, specific uh, license you need to drive a 125cc equivalent scooter. You know? And I said, OK, that's nice. I mean, you can really go fast in the, in the city. 125cc uh, is really powerful, so you don't need that uh, in, a, in a city like Paris. So let's see what we can do because of my circular economy and sustainable thing. Let's see what, uh, what exists in the uh, electric uh, vehicle and put it in, uh, in the street. That was. And mm -hmm. in the future, you want to work on projects, the basis should, would be like sustainable projects? Like yes, sustainable definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Just to give you some ideas before studying that, I, wor I, I tried to, uh, to design a business plan for um, um, you know, vegetal uh, rooftop. Uh, for aquaponia, so you know the the fish that is uh, feeding the the plants and the plants the fish and things like this. Uh, I worked in on on yeah many many topics like this uh, on uh, on um, organic food also. I mean a chain of organic food uh, stores, things like this. But yes, definitely this is uh, this is what I'm interested in. So. What was the occupancy rate? Because you mentioned that you would not make people pay uh, for the scooter when they're yes. not using it. Yes. But like they have reserved it, but they're not using it. Yeah. So the the this is really interesting. In fact, there are two major indicators that you have to follow in this case. So the first one is how many time a scooter is available. So over a 24-hour period, how many time is it available? So if you go to switch the batteries. The scooter is not available for rental, okay? So uh, how many hours in the day it's available? And then how many time it is rented during this, this available period? Um, so what we did by creating the temporary stop uh, button was we are going to uh, rise this occupancy rate mm -hmm. because they can reserve it. They are going to pay a lower fee, but they are going to pay. 
Um, and this was really the, the basic idea of, okay, even if someone gets the scooter in temporary stop uh, situation for two hours, mm -hmm. it will be one hour of rental. And that was nice for us because what we had was something like uh, three to four rental a day per scooter, which was not enough to make it uh, you know, profitable. So, and, the, and the usage was early in the morning, a bit at noon, but uh, almost nothing, and then at the end of the day, starting at five uh, at five uh, uh, five p.m. The other interesting thing is that as we were opened twenty four seven, there was a bit of usage between Thursday and Monday, because a lot of people were looking for new you know transportation uh, means during the night, and eight percent of our consumption were during the night, so. It's 8% that CityScoot does not have today because they close the service at midnight and they open again at 7. I, but so you basically had some, like, you never had 100%. No, but that's not possible. Have you, like, uh, thought or considered uh, putting two different tariffs? Like, for example, uh, one flat tariff, it's going to be um, 20 cents per hour. Mm -hmm. Another one, you pay 30 cents per hour, but you have this temporary button. Hmm. We, we, we did um, thought about the tariff, but in another way, in the way that, uh, that would optimize loyalty to our service. So meaning the more you use the, ser the service, the less you pay. So, and this is how I get the 21 euro cent per minute instead of the 19 cent per minute. This is by getting some users using the service at a price of 25 and others at a price of 17. So, and by managing this, making them loyal to the service, the more you use, the, more you, you, uh, the less you pay, then you can manage an increase of your average price. But I don't know if I'm understanding this correctly. If, if I book the, the, um, the motorcycle for one week, can I do it? No. What's the maximum day then? You can, if you, it's a per minute price, so there's no yeah, time but limit. But if, I, if it, let's say, I, like technically, I can book it for one week. Yes. And I can you will pay every minute of this week. Yeah, but usage, right? Because if I put no, the not usage. Uh, if you put the stop button, it will okay. be pause, pause, so it will be at nine cents. The nine cents during the pause time. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. because I, I like and but, but but it's a good question also because some are are putting a limit. For example, Emmy in Berlin, I think they put uh, the maximum is twenty four euro a day, so you can take the scooter f a full day. It would be maximum twenty four. Nine cents per, per hour, you said, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, because I think okay, I don't know if um, not good. We can go into financials later if you want. <laughs> One of the things you mentioned was that you were going to change these batteries every morning. Yes. Um, did you consider somehow incentivizing the users to come to you? Uh, we did, but we were not able to do it because we did not own our uh, IS. So it was a bit complicati complicated to put the incentives for you to, you know, to, to make users come to you and, and switch the batteries. On top, our <laughs> workshop was outside Paris because of the price of the, of the, uh, of the rental and, and so on. Um, but we did imagine many things. Because uh, I know some of the bike, um, the cycle yes, sharing, yes, yes. to rebalance the yeah, incentive yeah, of yeah. users. So they determine some areas where you can bring the, the bikes. Yeah, if you leave uh, it yeah. inside a certain area, yeah. then your price yeah. will be lower. That's nice, but we could not do it because it was not our, our information system. Okay. Did, you, did, you, did you try with... Sorry, there's a question over there. No. Have you ever think about the deposits? Because this is a good way to finance. Yes, but it's also uh, it's also a barrier for users to register to a service. And when you you are launching your service at the very beginning, it's a bit tricky. Even for bikes, for example, you know, in the Ofo Mobike and so on, they do a lot of promotions yeah. at the beginning. Even if the deposit is not that huge, but if you put thirty euro and you say, okay, it's only five, so then it's easier you know, to go, uh, but yes, I mean, you minimize the risk, 
because you and you also make people a bit more responsible saying okay I might lose my deposit if I do not care uh, enough of, of the vehicle yes I wanted to understand uh, something when you are choosing the quantity of uh, quantity of um, uh, scooters that you wanted to buy. Uh, I suppose that you then had a, a projection that you needed to have some electricity percent occupancy of your fleet before you were able to have uh, to be. Uh, yes, in uh, in theory, yes, in theory, yes, in the business plan, yes, we we did, uh -huh. but as you saw, we only have twenty scooters, so it was. I mean. It's a, it, it's a bit of wishful thinking at this stage to say, okay, this will be the occupancy for 20 scooters. No, but for bigger volumes, yes. But at this stage, it, it was. So that means that that's where you start because when you are 20, you were like losing like minus 30 percent. Or yeah, but it it, w it would not represent anything, you know, valuable at this stage. 20 is not enough to say, okay, this is the good level where you can uh, that you can reach. Because, I again, each time you open the app, you see that there's no scooter. So there are a lot of users that quit the service because it was frustrating. And even the scooter, the scooter when they were used, uh, people are not using it more than they need. And, and uh, they will use more scooter. If, you, if there's more scooter, they will use it more. But at some point, I mean, you, you, are, uh, yeah, you are putting yourself the limit uh, with only 20 scooters. So just to understand, that, that means with 20 scooters, you basically have them 100% used. Because no. Uh, what, what do you mean by 100% used? I mean, uh, I mean during a day... Available, not available, because no. I see people open, they don't have the, the scooter available. So theoretically, they are... No, the, the fact is that when you open the app, you might have some scooters available, but maybe they are the in the... Yeah, they are far away. Uh, and, and what you want to, to see is a scooter that is close to you. Maybe you, you, you would agree to walk 200 or 300 meters, but n not much more. So the beneficiary was not necessarily in the numbers, but in the location, that you did not cover Yes, but enough, as, lo right? as long as you have the, the number, yeah. I mean, the location is not that an issue. Mm -hmm. because, you know. mm -hmm. So, um, yes. I'm gonna insist on you with this. <laughs> <laughs> so have you thought of, so you have a problem financing your, your most important mm -hmm. assets, your only assets, basically. Yeah. Have you thought of... What do you, what, what you think is the biggest assets there? Your motorcycles. No. Okay. Your, for me, it's the information system and all the data you collect. Yeah, but like... So, so it was really hard at the very beginning to say the funds, okay, we are a digital company. Yes, we have a big part of operations, but we are a digital company, and all the value of the company will be DIS and the data we are going to collect. And when you look at Ofo, Mobike today, this is what they are doing. I mean, they are putting a lot of bikes, and what they say is, okay, my bikes are, have uh, four million rental each year, each day in uh, in uh, in uh, Beijing, for example. And uh, if you take New, uh, which is a, a scooter electric scooter provider. In China also, what they put is they put a GPS, uh, a GPS uh, card in the, in the scooter. And when you enter their factory, the only thing they track is the number of kilometers that the scooters do in, uh, in, uh, every day. So, I mean, the, the main asset, and this is, this is a bit complicated at the beginning, is really the information system, because this is where you are going to uh, build your service, really, with all the features you want to build, the nice things, and so on, and the data you collect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the... Um, uh, because as I've seen Paris coming from, uh, from Italy, I have a gas car, so running mm -hmm. on gas. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. of environmental purposes. Yeah. And I was shocked the first time I've seen Paris, like 90% of the cars running on diesel. Yeah. which is very pollutant, it yes. does not work in a city yes. because it has the FAT, the anti-particle filter. But I go again to the thermal motorcycles, which are way less pollutant than a car, let alone a diesel car. Have you thought of starting thinking with thermal motorcycles and then converting to electric cycles just to make sure that your financials would work? No, I did not consider this. So you're a hardcore yes. environmental. Yes. 
talking about your like you know, your uh, your app. Like you say, you you, you outsource. Yes, we rent we rented the app. Yeah, so we paid a monthly fee per scooter, basically. So when the company was bankrupt, there was no uh, asset that could be uh, repurchased by anybody. Oh. Only the scooters. Only the scooter. Yes, yes, and the brand, but the brand, I mean, is yeah. is what it is. But yeah. What did you rent the app from? A company called Bitaffect in Germany. Uh, now I think now you will find them. They are called Fleetbird. Fleetbird. Yeah. I'll ask you later. Yeah. Have you ever tried to find any foreign investors? Not really, not really. The fundraisers we, we we've been working with uh, did try. They said, but I'm not sure we investigated this enough. This is a good question. Maybe. I mean, if you know anybody, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, probably, probably. Well, I did discuss with Mobike in June last year, but they were super busy, really. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. We have um, two questions from people who are following on YouTube. Yes. Uh, the first question is, what is your next step? In entrepreneurship, yeah. are you going to go? Are you going back to big corporate or looking for a new venture? So this is uh, <laughs> this is what I said earlier. Uh, still, I don't know, but yes, I'm I'm still thinking about new projects. So uh, at this stage, my preference would be entrepreneurship, definitely. Okay. And just a second question is: Did you try to target some other cities, which could help with cost efficiency? Uh, not directly. So from ourselves, but uh, all the cities I presented uh, were supposed to be launched really early this year. So this would have been a good opportunity for us to uh, minimize the risks. And maybe as we, see, as we see, for example, for bikes, some are going in and then out of some cities because they see that it's not, uh, it's not viable. So that's, yes, we could have done this. Thank you. Just the last question and then we are all hungry. The pizza. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lots of pizza. Good. Thanks a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you discuss with uh, with the family guys to make the kind of uh, sort of private public partnership? Or yeah, but uh, yes, we we had the discussion with the city of uh, of Paris. They are, they were not interested to uh, build any partnership. They were really interested in having this kind of offers because it's green. <laughs> and it's really in the sense of history, you know, but uh, they were really pleased also not to have to put any money on this kind of, of project. No. Because it's green. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for this great testimony. Super. Je pense que la prochaine boîte sera la bonne. <laughs> <laughs>